all about reducing uh, government spending and how that will affect the UK economy and uh, just before the exams came up I uh, wrote an essay for the students on the fact that public expenditure is probably going to fall as a percentage of GDP it's roughly about 47 to 48 percent right now and perhaps by the year 2018 the government would like to get it down to, to about 40 <clears> percent <throat> now how would that impact upon the UK economy so obviously if you decrease government spending if you if you look at different countries you, you, you'll find that we <clears throat> that we've decreased government spending in the UK and it appears to be working but they decreased government spending in Spain and Greece and that caused very very large recessions indeed in fact Greece Greece's GDP as a whole has fallen by 25 percent of GDP however Greece has got all sorts of problems it doesn't collect any taxation revenue there's corruption it's been living on the credit card much stronger than anyone else it's got a very very large trade deficit the supply side performance of the economy is very very poor indeed however if you do decrease g the basic theory is the multiple accelerator works in reverse g falls we we're already got a recession so ad falls say from there to there and eventually you end up with lower tax returns so you do not want to decrease government spending now that is actually the viewpoint of most of the economists that it's a very dangerous thing to decrease g when times are harsh the labor party would still argue that the government has cut public expenditure too quickly however if we really think about it if you did if you do if you are able to decrease government spending as a percentage as a percentage of GDP and you can say reduce it to 40% of GDP then you can also reduce taxes to 40% of GDP now the main idea behind that is that then that will help to then create an enterprise economy and people will go out and start their own businesses and hence the economy should do better and better and better there's also an agreement here about revenue and capital expenditure and if you decrease revenue expenditure which is like teachers wages nursing wages doctors wages right rather than capital expenditure which is money spent on the infrastructure of the UK economy now if you reduce revenue expenditure surprisingly if you if you say give schools less money or if you give the police force less money it seems to be that those organizations find out better ways of delivering the same service that seems to occur because then you have to suddenly innovate because you've got to cut down on waste however decreasing capital expenditure seems to be pretty serious because you are not investing in the country your roads and rail systems aren't, aren't, aren't quite as good so therefore that will affect the long run aggregate supply curve from there however the goal is to try and achieve fiscal sustainability and that's important because if we can start decreasing government spending then we're going to pay less interest payments on our debt which is going to help us a lot and also we will we will continue to be able to borrow money at lower rates of interest i always find it pretty frightening really to, to find out that the debt is so big that it's 90 percent of gdp now in some respects as long as the economy grows and that's not a problem but it's but it will be a problem if we can't grow the economy anymore and i'm always slightly concerned that will the economy always be able to continue to grow and grow when there's likely to be more cost push inflation because resources are going up in price however the government has grown the economy and because the government has grown has grown the economy we can still borrow money at low rates of interest and they are slowly cutting government spending although we still have a very large budget deficit I've written Paul Krugman down on here because Paul Krugman says we should not be decreasing G when times are difficult. And lastly, what everyone seems to miss on, all students seem to miss this when they write their essays, if you decrease G, of course, well, that's not so bad because we've got a policy of monetary activism, which is very low interest rates, which compensates for the fall in, in G. And actually, over, overall, I'd suspect that the fall in G has been fast sorry the fall in interest rates has created more demand than the fall in demand created by the fall in g to what extent would you agree so this this was the essay that then came up in the exam now in one respect i've always taught my students that the best way of getting rid of national debt is to get is to get growth 
And there are lots of different ways you can get growth. You can increase G or you can decrease taxes. You can increase taxes and you can decrease G. You can lower interest rates. You can perhaps even print money. So there's loads and loads of different ways in which you can go about trying to reduce national debt. However, once again, in this essay is the basic argument if you decrease G, increase in Spain, has led to major, major recessions, multiply accelerator works in reverse. Are you going to decrease revenue expenditure? Well, that might once again make the public sector more efficient. Or are you going to decrease G in terms of capital expenditure? You spend this on roads and rail, and that will shift the long run aggregate supply inwards. Keynes said that in a recession that we should increase G because eventually you will get more growth and eventually the multiple accelerator will kick in and with that extra growth you'll be able to pay back the initial amount of money that you borrowed. The problem about increasing taxes is then that may lead to a fall in, day, a fall in aggregate demand. Although it appears that when the government increased VAT to 20% people are still spending money, that people have sort of got used to it. The extra 2.5% which means an extra £10 billion per year for the government seems to have worked. Okay, in the short run, there was a problem with that. But right now, I think people should accept the fact they've got to pay an extra 20% on top of their bills. High, higher corporation tax. Well, it's a very easy one to argue here that that's the last thing that you'd, that you'd want to do in an economy because it may mean that you collect less revenue in, in, in the long term anyway because of the Laffer curve in, influence. And then we move on to the essay, which is all the benefits about having lower national debt. The crowding in effect takes place because the government is borrowing less money. That releases more money for the private sector. Because the government is spending less money, more workers will then be forced to find work in the private sector. So therefore, that's going to save the government a lot of money. More workers moving into the private sector. That will ha help to keep wages down in the private sector. More people willing to start up their own business. The government will be able to keep their AAA rating, so therefore they'll be able to borrow money at lower rates of interest. Okay, and then also by actually by cutting revenue expenditure, actually with the police force and and the educational sector, it's making perhaps it's making both of those sectors more efficient. So people are having to think of new ways of doing things because they're having to save money, and it's forcing people into the private sector. But decreasing G has come under an enormous amount of criticism once again from the IMF. But remember, it was the International Monetary Fund who also missed out that the nice, that also missed out on the nice decade, who said that the UK was remarkably successful during that period of time, when actually we were actually creating a situation of macro instability. Now, Christine Lagarde has since apologised for her comments, saying that the UK government was following the wrong policies by cutting G too quickly. But I think it's always, it's always good to remember, at the back of your mind, to see the picture of, as a whole, that when we decrease G, we've also got very, very low interest rates, and that's helping to stimulate the economy. So even though the argument is, argument is if we decrease G, then that will lead to less demand, the lower interest rates is compensating for that fact. And then on top of that, we get all of these benefits in terms of our national debt. The other thing is, in the long term, remember going back to the plan for growth two lessons ago, in the long term, we want to create the most competitive tax structure in Europe. So if you decrease G, that also means, therefore, that you can lower taxes and that will then create more, more uh, enterprise. And finally, this policy of expansionary fiscal contraction appears to be working. So once again, as I said before, I'm no Tory because when I went out, when the government went out to print money, I would not have given it to the people who got us in the mess in the first place. And I believe that the way they did it has actually created or will create more inflation in the much longer term. I believe they should have put that money directly into, into banks, which new banks, which would have lent out to businesses. So the businesses would have been able to get hold of funds Sometimes there's nothing wrong with, with government-run banks. I also would have put money into the Green Technology Centre. However, overall, the government's policy appears to be working. Now, when you mark essays on this, this part, and I'm talking less than 1% of students will sort of talk about these ideas. But those are central to the whole argument about decreasing G within the government sector. The fact is, we have lowered interest rates. The long-term policy 
is to decrease taxes, which will create more enterprise within the economy, and also the expansionary fiscal contraction policy, which is what they call it from Harvard University, appears to be working.